We bought one of Ross for Robbie Wynn. This is your friend James. The blessing of the Lord, the blessing of making rich, and add no sorrow in you. The blessing and you. This is a. Let's continue. It's Isaiah 1 19 through 20. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Obviously, this is a prosperity scripture, but. If you be obvious, you know, but woo. one, if you be willing and obedient, willing and obedient. Now, this is different because if ye, obviously, this is for you talking to God's one talking. If you be willing and obedient, willing and obedient. Now, many people are obedient. They just do like the kid does what God, their parents tell them to do. And many people, God sends them on the missions trip. God tells them to, you know, give a uh, buy an extra uh, thing of milk gallon of milk for a friend so God tells them to do it, they do it, God tells them to give five dollars into the offering you know their, their church is raising money for something five dollars for an offering you know they do it, they're obedient they are obedient, they do what God tells them to do you know they do, the kid does what the parent, the kid takes out the trash you know he's a you know there's and he's just obeying and stuff like they're just obeying so though we got the obedient concept People do. They do what God says to do. God says forgive. They forgive. But fine, you do. You can get blessed for forgiving and stuff like that. But, you know, they, they're just doing it. But, so that's the obedience part. So we do have to obey God. Let's fo focus thing on that for a second. We, you do have to obey God. So that's the obedience part. So you have to do, if you don't do, if you don't obey, that, that doesn't work. You know, if he tells you to do something and you don't do it, then obviously this is not going to work. So we obviously have people who are just flat out disobedient. They're not obeying God. They don't want to do what God says to do. So it's not a wonder that they don't receive the blessings of the Lord, which maketh rich and have no sorrow to it. Okay, so if they, they don't, I mean, that's just it. If you be willing and obedient. So, so first of all, so we got the obedient. I'm doing the obedient part because I'm getting willing in a moment. But so yes, we do have to obey God. We have to do what he says. If he says give tithes, you have to do it. You have to want, you have to do it. I mean, this is part and parcel. If you disobey God, I mean, we think about it. If you are not obedient, then that means you're disobedient. He said, go into the promised land and take it. I'll give it to you. Possess it. They said, no, they were disobedient and died out. So obedient. So yes, there's doing what God says. But if yes, many people, Christianity has gotten the obedience part down. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. Do what God tells you to do. Do what your parents tell you to do. Do what your boss tells you to do. Now, this is what separates the good people. This is what separates certain people. And how what I'm about to say is going to let some that some people go higher and some people don't. They're obedient. It's time to say the person asks, them, "I need you to work. Uh, I need you to do the hamburgers." Okay, they do it. They they're obedient. So they're getting that part. God tells you, "I need you to work at this restaurant." So you do it. I want you to help with the youth. I want you to help with the children. I want you to do this particular department. You're obedient. You do it. Now listen. The reason why the blessing is cut off for so many people is this other word. If you be willing and obedient, willing and obedient, willing. First of all, we got the willing, willing should have, we, we could have did willing first because it's mentioned first. We should have did it first, but willing, like a willing heart, someone who wants to do it. See, this is a difference. The kid tells, you know, like, you know, I need you to take out the trash because I'll be happy to. The kid honestly is happy to take out the trash. There are some people out there who work at their bosses. Their bosses want them to do stuff. They work at the place. The boss tells them to do something. They're happy. They're willing to do it. They're willing. They want to help. Willing is something else. You want to do what he told you to do. He told you to help in the youth department. So, yes, you're obedient, but you change it so that on the inside you want to do it. He wants you to start a YouTube channel. He wants you to start a church. There are people who are obedient, but they're not willing. And when they're not willing, the blessing's not there. See, God can't make them eat the good of the land if they're no longer willing to do it. You have to make sure you keep the willer up. Keep the willing going. Because that's how some, That's one reason why many churches fail. Because they start off willing and obedient. Then they lose the willing part. They're just doing it by rote. There's no faith involved. See, he had to be both willing and obedient. Willing and obedient. That's why, so this is, for, for what's going to happen in the rest of this, for the rest of this verse is based off, the next phrase is based off being willing and obedient. If it's time to give your tithes, you have to change on the inside to be willing. You're not deceiving yourself. You know, you can take some time to decide, okay, uh, God told me to do, okay, 
I'm going to be willing to do it, so you're willing to do it. It's a simple decision on the inside. Willingness. And that's why many people, but this is a permanent. You have to keep the obedience and the willing concurrent. So that's really good. I like that. You have to keep the willing and obedience concurrent because some people, they're obedient and willing at the beginning, but five years later, they're no longer willing. They're just doing it out of, now listen, the blessing gets cut off. You know, they because that particular thing is cut off. They're obeying God. They're doing what they're doing. They're sowing the seeds, but they're not willing anymore. Just like people, they're willing to marry somebody and get with, get into a relationship. And, but at the end, they're no longer willing. So things go down. So you have to be both. If ye be both willing and obedient. So we have to keep them together. God tells you to do something, you do it, but you also have to be willing. But if you're not willing, you know, you, you're mad. God tells you to teach a, a Sunday school class, and you do it because he tells you to, but you don't like it, so you just, you know, you don't, you, you know, you wait to the last minute to prepare, and then you give it, and then you forget about it for the next week. You're not willing to do it. So we must marry willing with, and this is the decision of the heart. You have to be willing and obedient. It's on the inside so obedience is not so obedience is even you think about is the natural the child is obedient but on the inside they don't want to do it well god can't bless the child because they don't want to do it they take out the trash they're all being obedient the lord will have mercy on them they'll get a measure of blessing for being obedient but they're not going to eat they're, they're not going to eat the good land they're not going to get the full prosperity blessing they get the yes you are not disobeying god so therefore you are not going to have the curse running up rampant in your life because you are obeying god so there is no curse but you're not willing so this is you get the willing is the physical the 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 the, the obedient is the physical the willing is the mental that is on the inside that is a decision of the heart just like the Bible says in Corinthians chapter 8 and 9, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, they talk about you don't you not begrudgingly. You can't give the offering begrudgingly. You might as well keep it because you're obedient to give into the offering, but you don't want to give. If God, if you feel impressed to give three dollars and you're willing to give three, don't squeeze out two more extra dollars and give five if God didn't tell you to do that. So if you be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Ye shall. This is you. This is individually. Once again, the blessing and you. This is individually. People who don't want to do it, they don't want to be willing and obedient, they're not going to. This is not socialism. The human, you know, God, Jesus gives out rewards for people doing right and wrong. Great rewards, small rewards, whatever. But if ye, but so ye shall not, might not, maybe legislative language. Once again, you do this. You you sit, sit a you set a law in motion. Ye shall eat the good of the land. So that means you're going to experience. You're gonna have the best clothes, the best food, whatever. The best that the eat the good of the land, not the average of the land, not the least of the land, not the leftovers of the land, not the uh, not the brands of food that poor people buy you eat the good of the land you eat what's good in the land you know there's two types of orange juice you get the one that's good not the cheap one that's bad when it comes to gasoline you get the good gas not the cheap the bad gas when it comes to a vehicle you get a good vehicle when it comes to clothes you get good clothes when it comes to cars, you get good cars. Like I said, you get, when it comes to houses, you get good house. So you shall eat the good of the land. Eat, enjoy. It didn't say good and bad. Good. So God wants you to have good. So when it comes to time to buy a computer, you eat the good of the land. Not some cheap brand computer. Same thing with clothes, watches, electronics. You know? Anything you can think of that goes into the house or into your life, into your body. That even the same thing, if it's sending your child to college, you send them to the good of the land college. But this is predicate on you being willing and obedient. But if you are willing and obedient to do what God tells you to do, you shall enjoy the best. So that means you're at the top. Houses, neighborhood, the good of the land. See, people are trying to get the good without doing what God tells them to do. And without obeying, but listen, imagine this, people who do it without God, eventually their, their riches fly off like wings because they're not being obedient or willing to God, so it disappears. It's just like you can start being great and enjoying life, but if you go down, 
you'll, you won't be able to eat the good of the land. You know, you start off in faith, start off in blessing, and then you quit. It's gone. You know, it can start. It, I, mean, it's not, I mean, it starts waning because the, the willingness disapp disappears. That's really funny because I actually thought I read that before. Let's see, these are the healing scriptures. Beloved, I have seen Christ. Uh, good man, let them shout for joy. Save now, beseech thee. That's interesting. Hmm. I, believe we, I believe we actually mentioned that before. But anyways, this is the actual scripture. If you be willing and obedient, people are not willing. You know, if if you start off willing and obedient, the blessings there. But you you lose the, the willingness. It goes away. Obviously, if you lose the obedience, then that doesn't work either, right? You're willing. So some people, no, 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 no. Now let's 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 get this right. Some people are willing to work at church, but they are not willing to preach that sermon. Oh, they're willing to work at church, but they are not going to get up and be the associate pastor of that church. They got other stuff they want to do. They want to, you know, they got other things they want to do and they just are not going to be obedient. Now, this is not good because God will let you run your, hey, listen, if God wants you to be the associate pastor of a church, you can be the associate pastor of the church and still have your car garage that fixes cars. God's not forcing you to just do one thing or the other. But some people, they're willing to help at church, but they're not willing to teach a class. Nah, 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 nah. They're willing to, they're willing to, you know, they're willing to sing in the choir, but if someone needs to help on the praise and worship team, they're not willing to take that. Or, of course, you know, some people like to talk about the downs outside, but there are people who are, God's telling them to do great things, and they're just not going to do it. They want to help with church, they want to do something, but they just want to be an usher. They don't want to get involved. There are people right now who don't want to be you know, they want to be in charge. They want to be, what's this? They want to be the preacher or whatever, but they don't want to do anything else. I'm not talking about cleaning bathrooms. This is nonsense. I, I just want to get that out there. I mean, just, don't, 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 don't talk like that. Don't teach that. You just have to be whatever God tells you to do. Because I've seen ladies who outdress most people I know of, and they are happy to do the, they're happy to clean the bathrooms. That's not an issue. You have to be willing to be to what he says. If he says, if he says, bring some cupcakes, and that's what he tells you to do, and he tells you not to do something else, you see a chicken, you can bring chicken or cupcakes, and he says bring cupcakes, you want to bring the chicken because you got the cash to bring the chicken? No, no, no. He, he's, he needs obedience, not sacrifice. So you have to walk by faith and get those cupcakes, even if you're driving up in a Lincoln Nautilus. You still have to give what he says. If he says give ten thousand dollars in the in the account, you know, to a to a to a bus thing, and you have three and a half million dollars in your account, you have to be willing and obedient to do exactly what he told you. Period. That's it. You can't add to it. You can't go beyond the word of the Lord. So if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. This is not might not. This is the good of the land. There goes poverty. Poverty's gone. Nope. Poverty's history. That that eliminate that that literally eliminates the poverty doctrine too. All these scriptures are knocking that nonsense out. You shall eat the good. If you are willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. So if you're a preacher or a pastor or a ch child of God and you're willing and obedient, you should be eating the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, listen, refuse and rebel. Now listen, refusal is that you're just that's just flat out disobedience. We will not do it. I will not do it. I do not want to do what the Lord told me to do. So I'm just not going to do it. I don't want to keep myself for my wife, that person says. So I will not do that. I do not want to do it. So this is, this is a decide. I do not want to go to church like God instructed me. I do not want to give my tithes. You're refusing to do what God tells you to do. I don't want to pay my tithes. I don't want to use divine healing for any whatsoever. I don't want to believe God as he said. I don't want to put my trust in him as he said, believe on Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. I just don't want to do that. Now, that's the flat, so that's flat out disobedience, right? We got that. I just don't want to do it. I don't want to do it, so I'm just not going to do it. No, this is refusing. Now, this is something that people don't like to hear about, but God, have, you have to, the goodness and the severity of God. The goodness of God is the first, first, first half of the verse, the first 
thing we read, which should be about the first chapter, the first verse, the second verse, verse 20, is the severity of God. God's not just playing around. You have to do what he says. But if you refuse, we have people who are making decisions. I don't want to do that. I don't want to save myself from them. I do not want to, you know, do that. I, you know, I don't want to abstain from sexual morality. There are people who are actually doing that. I don't want to do that. I, you know, just, just don't want to do what God told me to do. I don't want to do I don't want to go to church. I don't want to help in the church. I don't want to pay my tithes. I don't want to be nice to the neighbor. I don't want to pray for my family. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to teach the Sunday school class. You know, I don't want to do this. This is part of it. This is part of the curse that people are doing this. It's going to set a spiritual law into motion. But if you refuse and rebel, what is rebel? Rebelling is when you actually take a motion, you make a move to do the opposite. The Tower of Babel made a move to do the opposite. What did they do? The Tower, the Tower of Babel, they said, we're going, one, they refused to do what he said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. They, they rebelled and decided that they were going to build a tower. See, this is action. We're not going to do it. The children of Israel, they refused to go in the promised land, but they decided to rebel by deciding, let's stone Moses, Aaron, Joshua, and Caleb. They made, they made a move, which is why God had to execute judgment, because they made a move not to do what he says. Now, rebelling, we're, like, for instance, I, someone who doesn't want to believe in God, that's a decision you make. You go to hell for that. But they don't want to believe in God, but that's refusal. But rebelling is when they decide to get with their friends and try to pervert the Constitution of the United States of America or whatever country they're in. You know, they didn't like Daniel, right? They didn't like him, so, but they actively did something to try to get him, you know, killed. Kind of makes you wonder how many people actually died. It's not written in the Bible, you know. Uh, makes you wonder how many people actually died because of that. You know, but the thing is, is the rebel is when they do active action, action against it. You don't want to believe in God, but now you don't want anybody praying in schools. The free exercise of religion allows teachers to pray in schools. The free exercise of religion allows an entire school system to have children say a prayer before class. Are you, are you, have, have you thought about that? Free exercise of religion means that if a teacher wants to get up and exercise her religion, she has, no one can stop her from doing it. Take your kid out of the class. Let him go to hell if that's what you want. But what the, the issue is, is that rebelling is when you take motion and action against it. It's one thing to not like a president of the United States of America. It's another thing to actively work to ruin his life get him thrown out of power. That's wickedness. See? This is rebelling. They rebelled against the king of heaven. They didn't want God to rule over them. God said, I am your king. They said, no, we, we want you set a king over us. We want a flesh and blood king. So, God gave them what they wanted. They rebelled against the commandment of God. The children of Israel, like they said, they didn't want to go in, but they actively resisted. And people are actively resisting doing what God tells them to do. If you refuse and rebel, that's what's going on. Not everybody's just wondering and looking for, you know, trying to figure out how to be at peace with God. There are people who are rebelling against the king of heaven. They don't like the concept that God said, Jesus himself said, he made them male and female. There is no discussion about multiple genders. Jesus said he made them male and female. The creator said he made them male and female. But someone who doesn't, was one thing to not want to hear that, to refuse it, to cast it down, you don't want to hear that. But there's another thing to rebel by actively going against the church. Politically, socially. See, this is not good. Judgment will hit all those people who are playing around because they're not just refusing it. This is how people get into this is how people get into real flat out judgment. When Sodom and Gomorrah didn't want to hear what Lot had to say, he said just Lot vexed, or, vexed his righteous soul daily. Sodom and is one thing for them to refuse the wisdom that Lot gave them. It's another thing for them to say, we will deal worse with thee than with them. 
Now they're actively going against. Now they're actively rebelling against God. Instead, it's one thing to sit there saying, we don't want to do it. It's another thing to actively rebel against God. To actively, they were going to, you know, raven sodomize Lot. It's not a joke. That's what they were actually going to do. They were going to do worse to him than he was going to, they were going to do to those two men, which happened to be angels. See, they rebelled. Once they took action against Lot, judgment had to come. Just like Moses, Aaron, Joshua, and Caleb. Once they took up stone, bathed, stoned them with stones. Judgment came. This is not a joke. God had to execute judgment. That's the end. That's a wrap. So you got people who are disobedient and people who are actively. You don't want to believe God for divine healing, but you actively teach against it. You don't want to receive the Holy Spirit, but you actively teach against it. See, that's refusing and rebelling. That judgment happens. What's this say? Ye shall be devoured with the sword. You're going to die. The sword of the wicked, the sword of Satan. You, if you if you go to the land, devour the sword. The exact opposite. That means you're going to die. You're going to be devoured with the sword. I mean, your crop's going to be gone, taken, total poverty, abject, and die. He just flat out said it. Refuse and rebel. You will. You shall be. Not might, not maybe. This is legislative language. You shall be devoured with the sword. Devoured. That's it. Gone. Devoured. The end. Devoured. Devoured, guys. Gone. You know, dead. Killed. Murdered. Come on, it's not a joke. People did dis... Why do you think you have... You know, why do you think you have certain places where there's high, high rates of violence? Well, go look and see. Are the people being willing and obedient to serve the Lord? Or are they refusing and rebelling? See, that's not good. You shall be devoured with the sword. That's why hard-headed children don't tend to live, live too long. Especially in poverty places. Ye shall be devoured with the sword. God is saying devoured with the sword. What does devoured mean? You know, ate up like dinner. You know, you know, barbecue, barbecue. I mean, it's devoured with the sword. I mean, just completely. You're not going to be, a, when someone's, when something's devoured, you devour, you know, it was people devoured. <laughs> they eat it up. And that thing, that sandwich had no chance. We say that. But imagine if the sandwich was a person and the, that person devouring them was the devil. They had no chance. Couldn't stop. They devoured that thing. That thing had no chance. Cake had no chance. You know, the person was hungry. Satan came and destroyed their lives. They shall be devoured with the sword. It means it's, gonna, it's over. If you refuse to rebel, that's the answer. Every person who is refusing and rebelling will be devoured with the sword. Right now, today, in the 21st century, we, they, they shall be. The end. They shall be. Devoured with the sword. This is the real world, guys. This is how the real universe works. Death and life. Choose life or death. You can have life and eat the good land or death and not. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. It means that God has set this into motion by the word. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Isaiah 55, 11. That's God talking. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but his words won't. In fact, he also said that until um, every single word is, has passed, until every single word is fulfilled, not one jot or tittle is going to disappear out of the word. God's already set this into emotion. Why do you think Satan was kicked out of heaven? The mouth of the Lord has set rules. He could not go against that. Sedentitrab was killed. Why? The people came, you know, God set rules. He broke them. Imagine uh, in uh, Egypt, God broke rules. I mean, they broke rules that God set. They, I mean, why? They put, God did not say they were allowed to put those people into servitude. God said, let my people go to serve me. They refused. Then they rebelled by coming after e Egypt, I mean, after Israel to kill them. They actively went against. And so then their whole thing was just whatever is actively And they were rebelling to begin with. Why do you think? Let my people go. Then they rebelled. Did you ever consider that? God said, let my people go. Then they said, hey, we're not going to provide you with, you know, the straw to make the bricks. That's act of rebellion. You probably didn't even notice that. 
At the beginning, at the outset, they rebelled, made a move against God. Wicked people do that. Don't be deceived. Don't play around. This is, this is not a joke. There are, there are real wicked people you don't need to be playing around with. You need to get deliverance from and resist them in the name of Jesus because they are actively working against the kingdom of heaven. But what it says, what's the end of their life? There, they'll be devoured with the sword, but for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And God is in the highest position of authority in this universe. As a creator, he can set the rules. You make a video game, you can make the rules of the video game. We got it. We got apps that we play games on. And, you know, we got video games we play. We have banks that have certain procedures to get the, the money out of the bank. Some banks do this. Some banks do that. Some schools have different application processes. I mean, you don't have to sing a, a oratorio or an aria or something to get into some engineering schools. So different schools have different things that they do, different requirements for graduation, different classes. Whoever owns the school has the right to set the, to dictate the policy. Certain governments have different policies for becoming citizens. But guess what? There's something that supersedes all that. Even parents and families have different rules in their families. Some of them are quite very unjust and evil. But there's something higher than that for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. God, his, his rules, his laws supersede it all. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. He flat out said you'll be devoured with the sword if you refuse and rebel to do what he tells you to do. If you refuse and rebel, you're going to get, that, it just, that's how it is. And you have to believe it, you have to meditate on it for the good part, but of course even for the evil part. That's why you don't have to be in anxiety about wicked people who are doing wicked things, because guess what? They're going to get what they deserve. They are going to actually get what they deserve, because they're going to get what they, you basically say they're going to reap what they sow regardless of whether they want to or not. You will reap it, it's coming. Isaiah 1, 19 through 20. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Then we be.